Hey, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. And you're watching In Depth on Now You Know. You can help support our channel by going over to ecoware.us, where we've got new designs all the time, and we have carbon offset the production, shipping, and life cycle of every product, and we plant a tree for every order. And we're brought to you by abetterrootplanner.com. They just added some new features to their premium version of their app, which you can sign up for using our link down below to get a 30-day free trial. And we're sponsored by our friends at the Solar Powered Hotels in Schaumburg, Illinois, that's right near Chicago, the Fairfield Inn and Suites by Marriott, and the Town Place Suite Hotel right next door. They're both connected, they're both solar powered, and they both have EV charging. All right, so what are we talking about today, Jess? Oh, and by the way, I wanna mention that this is episode 176 of In Depth, and in a couple of weeks, we'll be celebrating our 200th episode of Tesla Time News, but In Depth is right behind, 176 weeks in a row that we've been doing the show its own independent episode. So, yeah. I mean, if you add those together. Oh, then, then we did beat Cheers and, uh, and Friends. Friends. Wow. Yeah. Think about that. <laughs> yeah, so this week we're talking about the internal camera in the Tesla Model 3 and Model Y. Um, that was an addition that came in with all Model 3s right off the, the production line. And in the beginning, everyone was like, what are these cameras? And then everyone forgot that they even existed. Right, as we just reported last week on Tesla Time News, uh, they're about to be turned on in the latest over-the-air update that Tesla is pushing. Um, and so you'll soon be able to choose whether you want to let Tesla have access to that data. And so we thought, now's a good time to start that conversation because this is a whole new thing. And uh, there's some good things and maybe some bad things about turning that camera on. Right. And now one of the first things isn't necessarily new. Um, we've had sentry mode in Tesla's for quite a while, and it's proved to be quite useful for quite a lot of people. Uh, it's people... generated a lot of new videos that we never would have seen of things happening to people's cars that we never knew were going on. Yeah, everything from cars being keyed to cars being broken into to people putting dogs on cars inexplicably for no apparent reason. Uh, lots of different things that you just wouldn't have normally seen because your car is just a dumb thing that sits there, but with the Tesla, not anymore. But now with a new camera being turned on, I mean, it was always there, but we never got to see it. This means that if someone breaks into your car, there you will have some video showing what happened. Yeah, so let's talk about this for a second. So this is the cabin camera and it's right above the rear view mirror in the car. So it's that little dot right there. Mm -hmm. And um, Tesla is gonna allow you very soon in the next over the air update to decide whether you wanna allow them to have access to it only in very limited circumstances. This would be right before an accident um, or a safety event. And so you might be asking, how do they know about the accident? Well, it's always recording, but they would only keep the footage of say, 30 seconds before an accident happens. Right. Now, why would Tesla need that data? So there's kind of a lot of different uh, reasons that they'd want it. The biggest one would be the reason that they want to capture data from the exterior cameras of your car. It's to train the neural net. I know, and, but what am I doing as a driver that would help them to, to know that? So normally the external cameras are telling the neural net everything about what's going on on the outside of the car. Oh, it looks like there's a tank driving across the road. Maybe that's a edge case that we haven't seen before. Maybe we should start training for seeing tanks. But more likely, you're gonna be seeing stop signs and uh, you know cars, regular cars on the road, maybe some dogs and people and horses and deer and alligators if you live in Florida. You know, all of this different stuff that's gonna help train the network to be like, ah, I, I know that that is an animal. I should stop the car or that is just a, a paper bag. I don't need to stop the car. That's not going to I'm not going to hit it and be damaged in any way. So now we're taking that same idea of a neural net and applying it to the inside of the car. OK, so let me imagine this then. You're basically saying that uh, Tesla could see that a crash has happened. Look at what happened outside the car. Okay, these two cars collided. Then look inside the Tesla and say, well, what was the driver doing right before that crash? And it might go like something like this. Oh, the driver was looking to the left, but the car came in from the right. He should have been looking to the right. Right. Or the driver was looking down at their phone or the driver was asleep or the driver was paying attention and the person came out of nowhere to hit them. 
So I can think of some improvements that Tesla could do right off the bat that would probably help with driver safety and car safety, which would be, for instance, take this thing that happens to almost all of us, right? You're driving home in the evening from work. The sun is setting. You go over a hill and right there is the sun in your and eyes you go, oh, and you weren't ready you for it. Yep. And right. And so you're like reaching for sunglasses or putting down your visor or whatever. And so for those split seconds, you're kind of not a great driver. And that's when an accident could occur. Well, Tesla could know that's going to happen because they could see this data happening over and over and over again in crashes. They could be like, every day at six o'clock when the sun is setting, there is an accident that happens over this hill crest. And so we should alert drivers to be extra careful, maybe drive slower as they approach that. Right. So, I mean, that could be anything from a visual prompt on screen to an audio prompt of like solar glare warning slow down, put on your sunglasses, whatever. Right. There could be many different things. So one of the things that Tesla could do instead of just warning you would be to actually take measures to make you safer. And you might be wondering, like, how on earth would they do that? Basically, when you're driving the car, the car still knows what's going on. If one of the safety features is if you let go of the wheel and you start to drift off of the road, it'll actually keep you on that line that you're crossing over to hopefully keep you from you know, falling off a bridge or something. Mm -hmm. Tesla could do a similar thing here where they have, you know, your automatic emergency braking. You can tune that to different levels. It can give you a warning really early. Um, and I like having it on early because that way, if I'm not paying attention or something, you can go beep, beep, beep. The car could sense when you weren't paying attention. Oh, by learning that your eyes are not in the right place. Right. And so if that neural net is tracking like, you know, basically wherever my eyes are, it's like driving, driving, not paying any attention, driving, driving, not paying any attention. Once it's learned either me or just people in general, when people aren't paying attention, and this could be like a setting that you could adjust, it could increase the the safety margin. So basically, if it sees something a little suspicious that normally it wouldn't warn you about or wouldn't break for, um, if it sees that you're not paying any attention, it might give you an even earlier warning. Hmm. It could say, it could just go beep, beep, beep. And you'd be like, oh, huh, I wasn't paying attention and something little scary happened. Good thing the car warned me. That'd be a really good use. Another use would be, you know how you're taking a route home that you've taken a million times before and you get to some intersection where you know that you should give an extra look to the left, let's say, because there's a parking lot and you know that, that uh, lots of like buses are leaving at that time. So you're like a super expert on this trip. But what if you're taking that route for the first time, right? And you don't know to give that extra look to the left. What this could do is it could learn after so many accidents and stuff that, you know what? I should give the driver an extra little warning here because this is where a lot of accidents happen. True. And I mean, this would take a long time to train. Like this wouldn't be like they could turn it on next week. Right. This would need to have a lot of Teslas involved in accidents for them to build that data set and to realize what the drivers did wrong. Um, to give the appropriate warning. This definitely seems like a much later version of maybe even it's not telling the driver that it just knows it because it's driving itself. But I think how interesting would it be if your car alerted you to like you were entering a zone where traffic accidents are very common. Right. This intersection ha is very common for accidents. I mean, you actually see this sometimes in the real world. They'll put up a sign, dangerous intersection, and you go, why don't you just make the intersection better? Why why a sign? Right. But it does make you, oh, it's dangerous. Right. It, you, you pay attention and you might prevent an accident because you were a little bit more vigilant. If your car could know, even from just, you know, crash statistics that this particular intersection was dangerous and give you that warning, it could save you from getting into an accident as well. Now, you'd mentioned something before, which uh, got my brain spinning, which was you were talking about that the camera could see that I'm not paying attention to the road. Mm -hmm. And now I'm thinking about, drowsy driving happens to all of us let's be honest mm -hmm. you get in the car you've had a long day at work or whatever and it's a long commute home and you get a little drowsy super dangerous how dangerous is it well according to AAA there are over 328,000 drowsy driving crashes annually 109,000 injuries occur from those crashes and wait wait whoa 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 over a quarter of a million accidents every year just from drowsy drivers I thought you were going to say like 62. No. And in fact, there are over 6,400 fatalities per year from drowsy drivers. That's just in the U.S. That's just in the United States. Yes. In a year. In right. Every year. OK, so wait a minute. 6,400 people die caused by drowsy drivers, whether you're the driver or they smash into you. Yeah. 
So if your car could be wise to the fact that you were driving drowsy and either wake you up or basically tell you to stop driving the car. I mean, Tesla does this now to a certain extent. They don't have the camera, but if you're in autopilot and you don't pay attention to the warnings, that means that you're either distracted or drowsy. Um, like if you fall asleep, the car is going to start beeping at you very loudly and then it's going to uh, slow down. If, so like if you're dead asleep, it'll beep at you, it'll slow down, and then finally come to a stop. How do you know that happens, Jesse? Well, we did a video on it where we tested it out. So, I mean, Tesla already does something when you're not paying attention, and that's just through the use of the wheel. But if it could be detecting that you were drowsy, you know, because you could drive an autopilot while you were drowsy. You, you could get away with it to a certain extent. But imagine if you were driving without autopilot because you're like, oh, I better stay awake. I'll, keep, I'll drive it myself. For whatever reason, you're drowsy, you're not making too much sense. If the car can detect that you're drowsy and give you lots of alerts to, hey, wake up, wake up, <laughs> you know, and, and eventually maybe even pull you over on, on the side of the road and park your car. I wonder if all people get drowsy the same way. Like, I wonder if uh, some people get drowsy, you know, with the head nod. But like, I wonder if other people are just like they look like they're completely awake and you can't tell. Because I, I imagine if you wear sunglasses, it must be pretty hard to tell with some people that they're drowsy. That's true. But I mean, even if you could take a small fraction of 6,400 fatalities a year or 109,000 injuries. So, I mean, even if you could cut that by 10 percent, you'd save 640 people's lives. Exactly. Wow. Um, and, and that's just drowsy drivers. Yeah, let me just ask you about this. Let's go like one step even further. How about drunk driving? That's something we've been trying to solve for years. Is there a way that you think the camera could solve that? Absolutely. I mean, I think if it can kind of detect that you're drunk, and I know that it's probably not going to be perfect, but if, if you're like really drunk, it might have some ways to be able to detect that. Um, okay, well, how many people die in drunk driving accidents? Even more than drowsy drivers. That's uh, 10,511 per year. That is fatalities. That's 30 people a day die from drunk driving. Wow. That's one person every 50 minutes. Wow. So pretty much by the end of this show, someone in, just in the United States will have died from a drunk driving accident. So again, this doesn't have to be perfect to start. If it can just solve, say, 10% of that, that would save a thousand people a year. Right. Because, I mean, let's be honest, if you're drunk, you're probably also a little drowsy. Again, any little bit where it kind of detects that you might be drunk because here's the thing it, it might not even have to stop the car it could just alert other drivers as a part of like your emergency contact list almost and let them know that you're driving drunk or suspected to so they can give you a call and just be like right hey man how are you doing and then they if they're your friends they can probably tell like oh i'm doing great <laughs> Oh, I'm just driving home. They're like, hey, why don't you pull over and we'll get you an Uber or something? Yeah. You know, like, let's <laughs> let's right. take care of you that way. Um, no, that's a really good point. The car doesn't have to be 100% sure before it at least contacts some friends or family. Right. And then they can double check and, right. and do the human thing. And I mean, hey, that's not even the end of it. We have distracted driving. Oh, like texting while driving? Exactly. Uh, that accounts for 391,000 injuries per year and 3,450 deaths per year. Wow. So just between those three statistics alone, we could be looking at saving a lot of people's lives, even if we can just take a fraction of those people who would have gotten into an accident and prevent them from getting into an accident by use of an internal camera that can sense when their eyes aren't on the road. All right, but aside from safety features, which I completely agree that this would be great for, is there anything that the camera could be used for that would just make life a little better? Yeah, uh, obviously you could have uh, video conferencing in your car. While you're driving? Uh, no, while you're parked. Oh, okay. Well, you could have it so that they could see you, but you couldn't see them, I suppose would be one possibility. But yeah, I mean, while you're parked, you could just have the... The camera. I mean, the, the problem would be that you'd be like looking down here at your screen as opposed to looking up at the camera. But it, we're it's all better than now. Yeah, right. better than nothing. And, you know, th there could be a couple other use cases like that where you could kind of check in on your car. So you could like look at all the cameras of your car from the app. So the, all the exterior cameras to make sure that no one's like lurking around your car. You could also check inside your car. Now, why would you want to do that? Um, well, let's say, oh, I forgot my laptop. Is it in my car? Do I want to take the, the 27 flights of stairs down because the elevator is broken today? Or I could just check, see if it's in my car. Oh, no, it's not in my car. I must have left it in Joe's office. Or it's like, 
is has someone broken into my car and is going to try and kidnap me? Okay. That's a worry for some people. Yeah. And, you know, there's obviously you can walk up and look into your car. But if you don't want to do that, you can just look at your app. I mean, presumably someone would have to break the windows, which would have set off the car alarm anyway. But assuming they got in, you could just check and see. And that would be just such a, oh, okay, this is no one in my car. It seems like this is going to be used in a thriller movie at some point. Absolutely. And I mean, th there's all sorts of uses for being able to check and see what's going on in your car. You know, like maybe you have a birthday cake and you want to see, oh, is it melting? Right. So let's talk about something even more valuable than a birthday cake. Children. Uh, yeah. I mean, this is kind of a sad subject, but uh, on average, 39 children per year die from heat stroke by being left in a car. Wow. And that number has actually been higher in the past two years. And also that has something to do with climate change as well, which we know isn't going to get any better. Yeah. I mean, 53 children died in 2018, 52 died in 2019. So, I mean, this is not going away. People are actually accidentally leaving kids in cars. Um, I was surprised to see that about 25 percent of kids in cars climbed into the car supposedly unbeknownst to their caregiver. So it was it wasn't like you just left them there for a minute to run into a store. It was like maybe they got in in the driveway like, hey, I'm going to go play hide and seek and I'm going to hop into mommy's car right. and then no one found them again. Right. And so here's where, again, the internal camera can be useful. The car knows when this when something is in the seat um, and that could, you know, kind of clue it in that, huh, you know, something's moving around on the seats. Maybe it could be a child then peeks in with the camera, although it would always be doing this. And if it's, uh, you know. If it uses a neural net and says, yes, child, then it can just turn on the air conditioning and send you a message to let you know, hey, you either forgot your child in the car or your child has gained access to your car or there is a child. I mean, you'd want to know if there's a kid in your car. <laughs> right. Um, but it could also turn on the air conditioning so that way they don't die of heat stroke. But now you might be saying, OK, but what if the, the battery is really low and it's going to run out of battery? Well, you could uh, roll down the windows. You could turn on the car alarm. You could even use the pedestrian noisemaker to start like alerting people like there is a child in this car. Please, someone get this child out of the car. I'm right. going to shut off the air conditioning in five minutes, please. All of those different things could be used to save lives. Now, that's super important. That's children. But also pets get left in cars all the time and lots of pets die. In fact, it's estimated that hundreds of pets die every year from being left in automobiles. Right. Now, it's important to keep in mind that Tesla already has dog mode. Right. Right. So you can when you drive up to someplace, you can leave the air conditioner running in your car without having to leave it idling because it's an electric car. And it's dog mode, so it has a little thing on the screen to let everyone know that your dog is safe with that particular temperature. So it's not too hard for Tesla to just like identify dog in the car and say, turn on dog mode. Right, because I mean, how many times does this happen to a, a perfectly reasonable human being, right? You leave your pet in the car to run in to do an errand, and then you bump into Joe, your best friend from high school, or and you not start your talking. best friend, and it just keeps yapping and yapping. And Ned! Ryerson. Ben, and right. before you know it, you know, an hour has gone by, the car is overheated and your pet has been injured or dead. Um, this could really help because then your phone could beep in five minutes and be like, uh, did you know you left your pet in the car? Right. And you'd be like, got to go. Right. And it could continually send you messages. There's all sorts of wonderful safety things that it could do because it has a camera in the car. And I mean, so all of those things could lead to a much safer car. Now, I want to go back to one thing that you mentioned, which was driving while distracted or yeah. texting while driving, which we know that happens to all of us. But it happens especially to teenagers um, because these are people who are first learning to drive and they've grown up with smartphones in their hands. And so they're like, why can't I just text while I'm driving? Uh, you could have a parent mode of some kind that would allow you to set this so that if your teenager even looked at their phone while they're driving, it would send you like, let's say, a video clip of them so you could confirm it. And then it could do things, I don't know, whatever level you want. It could have it beep at them. It could have it pull the car over and stop. It could, you know, do a number of things. But that could be a huge safety difference. Yeah. And I think that especially when you're a new driver, that's when you're kind of learning how to drive, obviously. But that's kind of when you're making all of your habits of when you're driving, you know, whether you're going to be chewing gum or whatever, you know, whatever mm -hmm. you're doing. So if texting while driving is kind of trained out of you because your mom's going to yell at you and there's no way you can get around it, that is a, a pretty big deal. I think. I think it'd be really cool if the screen had just, you know, 
took a video of your mom yelling at you. And then when you pick up the phone, it's like, Harold, stop texting. <laughs> right. It, it, it would be a pretty effective measure. And I mean, it wouldn't just have to be for parents. There right. are plenty of people whose significant other it just is like, please stop texting. Please, 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 please. This could, again, be used in that same uh, way. You could even use it on yourself. It's true. Yeah, you could have it text you whenever you're <laughs> texting. No, but I mean, it, it could uh, just by having an alert or something, because sometimes you're not even thinking about it. You're just like, oh, uh, someone texted me. Let me just quickly check. And if it was just like, beep, stop texting. And you might be asking, I would never turn that on myself. But let's just take a look at this. Tesla insurance, right? Tesla auto insurance is is actually insuring Teslas as we speak in California. And they're going to be spreading this out to presumably the rest of the world. Tesla insurance could say, hey, if you turn on this feature, this anti-texting feature in your Tesla, we'll reduce your car insurance by, say, 20 percent. Right. And I can see a lot of people going, hey, I'll report on myself for that. Right. And yeah, I mean, th that's kind of the thing. It, it could also be measuring how good you're paying attention, all sorts of stuff like that gets a little sketchy. But at the same time, if you're a really good driver. Maybe you're going to be paying, you know, five bucks for insurance because they know that there's just no way you're going to get into an accident because you're such a good driver. Maybe you get paid for being such a good driver. I, right. I mean, there could be, you know, it could get pretty crazy if you wanted it to. It, it's just opening up a lot of different possibilities. Now, let's go to what I think is the reason why Tesla put this camera in the car in the first place, which <laughs> is we believe on this channel that they're going to turn on the robo taxi network at some point soon. Right. The Tesla network. It's right. It's been talked about before by Elon. So we we're not too crazy for thinking that this might happen. But one of the things you would need if you're going to allow your car to go out there and pick up passengers without you in it as the driver is you're going to need some way to keep those passengers accountable for their actions. Because we hear this a lot from people who say, I would never rent out my car on that network because uh, people are strangers and I'm not going to let them get in my car. Right. Or they're filthy or they're going to they're going to vomit in my car. Right. Or they're going to they're going to deface the inside of my car. Guess what they're not going to do if you have a camera. Right. Most of those things. Um, and if they do any of those things, they're you're going to have them on film doing it right. and they're going to have to pay for it. So that kind of is the uh, again the reason that we think that Tesla put this camera in the car. And you might be saying but oh you could just put a sticky note over it. If you put the sticky note over it, a that will be against your, you know, terms and conditions and it definitely incriminates you to whatever right. oh hmm, someone seems to have scratched their name in the back of the car. I wonder who it could have been. A pretty dumb to do your name and B <laughs> pretty dumb to cover the camera because obviously it was you. And another benefit of the robo taxi network is that when you eliminate the driver, um, you're also eliminating a source of potential harm to you. A lot of people, especially in the early days of Uber, were afraid of getting into an Uber because they're afraid of the driver of the Uber. Right. And then Uber actually came out with a report verifying the worry that you should kind of have anytime you step into a vehicle with someone else that who you don't know. Right. I mean, the numbers were kind of shocking. In 2017, there were 2,936 assaults in Ubers, and that number went up to 3,045 assaults in 2018. And so even though that's a small percentage of the number of drives, that was you know, picked up by a lot of the media and was another reason to be a little bit afraid about getting into a stranger's car. When you get into a robo taxi, there is no stranger in the car. You are the stranger. It's just a robot driving. Mm -hmm. And this would mean that even before Tesla enabled like full self driving for robo taxi, even just a Tesla network, human taxi network would still have that level of security because you'd right. have the camera. And again, if someone covers the camera, they're incriminating themselves. Right. So, I mean, this wouldn't fully 100% eliminate the chances of getting assaulted. But yes, with a camera facing everyone in the cabin, yeah, you're far more likely to stay professional. Um, And so let's talk about kind of the next step here. I think we all know where we're going is that once you've got a camera facing you, you can do all kinds of things with it. You can do facial recognition. I think the first thought that comes to people's minds when you talk about facial recognition is something like what happened in Minority Report, mm -hmm. right? Which is that computers can start to figure out who you are, where you're going, where you're up to and that's a loss of your privacy and so let's take a look at that but let's first take a look at if there's anything positive that we could use facial recognition for 
So yeah, the first thing is just kind of a convenience feature. It could immediately identify who is driving and uh, adjust everything without needing any input. So uh, sometimes when me and my girlfriend get in the car, both of our phones are connected to the car and it will adjust to her and not to me. So I'm going to be like, what's going on? <laughs> and that's just because it's relying on Bluetooth and sometimes her Bluetooth is stronger than my Bluetooth. I don't know how that works, but what essentially ends up happening is that I have to go and adjust all my seat settings back to me. It's not the end of the world, but with facial recognition, it could say, Jesse is the driver on this trip and adjust it to where I sit. Okay, but anything else you can think of that would be a positive facial recognition use? Because, I mean, if that's the only good thing, I don't know if I want it. Right. Well, I mean, on top of the other things we talked about, I would think that that would be another layer of security. So uh, kind of like pin to drive. Mm -hmm. So even if you get in the car and you have the fob or you have the key card or you have your phone um, that says, unlock the car, let's go for a drive, you still have to enter in the pin in order to actually gain access to the car. Well, this could be another layer of security on top of it where it needs to recognize you before it will allow you to go. So if someone in the parking lot stole your phone, held a gun up to you and said, what's your pin? And you said, oh, it's 5555. Five, five, five. Then they go, all right, you better stay there. And then they get in your car and they try and drive away. If they don't recognize the person as a registered driver of the car, it won't work. So a little crazy because I mean, like, what if someone breaks your nose or right. what if you're wearing sunglasses? Again, I think it would be opt in just like pin to drive, but there could be a kind of reverse version of this, which is if your phone died or you lost your fob, you could potentially be able to get into the car. Uh, people have talked about being, you know, doing a series of hand signals to <laughs> unlock your car. Um, and then in order to drive, you would essentially enter your pin, uh, your special backup pin for when you don't have your fob working. Um, and for some reason, you can't plug in your phone into the charger in your car. What? I, look, what I'm saying is it would be a special backup pen. You would need to recognize your face. It would be scanning, confirmed, and then you'd enter in your backup pen. So, I mean, I think this is why so many people are afraid of facial recognition. There don't seem to be as many positives as there could be downside negatives. I mean, when we start talking about putting cameras in places, right, there are certain countries like the UK where there's cameras all over the place. And the reason for that is to reduce crime, right? Mm -hmm. It's uh, first of all, if you see a camera, you're much less likely to commit a crime. But also if a crime has been committed, they can piece together who it is and go capture the person. But on the flip side of that, with cameras everywhere, we are losing our privacy. And you might argue on a public road that, OK, well, I don't really have a lot of privacy anyway. But generally, I think we feel like in our own car, we should be fairly private. Mm -hmm. um, and so now with this camera thing, I think a lot of people are thinking big brother. And if you haven't read 1984, by the way, <laughs> definitely put that on your reading list. Yeah, I think this is a very interesting slippery slope in a discussion we should be having because technology are tools. And when we get a tool, you can use a tool for good or bad. And I don't think you should necessarily throw out the tool because it could be used for bad. But on the other hand, I do think that that means this is the time to be talking about rules and policies so that we use the tools as best as possible. Right. Now, one thing to keep in mind for everyone who's super worried about them turning on this camera facing you, if you have one of these things, um, it's got a ton of cameras on it. I mean, uh, this one has one in the front, two in the back. It's got a microphone. It can communicate to the cloud. If you're worried about technology and about being spied upon, um, you might want to consider, I don't, look, I don't know how to live your life without one of these. I get a panic attack anytime I leave the house without it. But if that's right. your concern, this is another one of those things that you're going to need to throw out before you are going to throw out your Model 3. It's just, yeah, I think it's just um, for a lot of people who watch this channel, I think we're kind of t on top of technological changes mm -hmm. as they happen. Um, and we can be a part of that discussion. I think for a lot of other people who are going to find out about this, you know, six years from now when they finally get into a robo taxi, um, it's going to be a little shocking because we are moving very fast right now. And it is hard to determine 
whether these are good things that we're doing or bad things. Now, I will say that with Tesla so far, they do have access to cameras all around the cars. And from what we've seen, they've done a really good job with their security. I mean, we haven't heard of anybody hacking in and stealing the data. Mm -hmm. And they've been really good with the usage of those cameras. Every now and then they have to turn the footage over to law enforcement. And they've seemed to have been doing it in the what seems to be the right way. Right. And a lot of times law enforcement doesn't know to even ask. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, Tesla has been doing a pretty good job as far as we can tell. I mean, tomorrow there could be a story that there's some backdoor that the FBI has. And well, that would just be the way that that was. But I mean, keep in mind, if it is your car, you can put a sticky note over the camera. Right. I mean, if it's your car, you can do whatever you want. And you're, I, I, I would argue that you would say, I, I value my privacy when it's someone else's car. That's when I think uh, the sticky note needs to come off. That's a good point. So, I mean, if you drove, let's say, a Model 3 as your private car, but every now and then you wanted to put it on the RoboTaxi network, you could pull that little sticker off when you were putting it on the network so you'd know what's going on. And I think that one of the things that Tesla might consider doing is having it, uh, the, the interior camera, be saved as part of uh, your dash cam footage uh, to your little stick. So just like right now, if you get into an accident, you can pull out your stick and say, ha you did crash into me. You could do the same thing where you said, aha, I wasn't drunk or aha, I was driving the car. Or, oh, so aha. save it locally so that it's your data. Basically, you're controlling it. No one else has access to it. Right. I mean, Tesla has said before that if you got into an accident, you didn't have anything in there. If you contacted them early enough, they would be able to grab the data from your car. I think that's just because it's on a local cache inside of your vehicle. I don't think that there's some giant server somewhere just collecting all of your data. Um, I, I, I do think that it's because it's saved on your car uh, internally. But with that being said, I, I think that that might be, again, another good use for this internal camera. I mean, the thing is, it is there and has been there for years and nothing ill has happened of it yet. But again, we do need to focus on pressuring companies and uh, legislature to make sure that that gets used the right way. Yeah, and that's why we'd like your comments below because there's a lot of smart people watching this video and you have a lot of perspectives that we've never thought of. So let's start a conversation in the comments below. Let's keep it polite um, and let us know some things that you think that could go wrong. Maybe some things you think we could use it for positively so that we can start to just start this conversation. And thank you so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And now you know.